In my video last week, we looked at Michael Bennett as a pass rusher. We discussed his role in the Seahawks defense and how he lined up as an edge defender on early downs. On third down or any obvious pass rush situation, he slid inside to become their 2-eye technique or 3 technique, lining up opposite of one of the guards. This week, I wanted to finish my breakdown based on how good he is at defending the run. To start, Bennett is an excellent snap timer. He penetrates using his hands and has a keen awareness for where the play is going. Not only can he wreak havoc and knife through offensive lines, he has the strength and hip mobility to withstand double teams at the point of attack. Above all from my film study, his mastery of how to defend zone running plays is truthfully what inspired this video. Now, if you want to watch two perfectly executed games, go watch the Atlanta matches from the 2016 season. He understood how to hold the point of attack and how to use his alignment to create leverage. In this play, he took an outside step and then slammed his inside shoulder into Jake Matthews. This drove Matthews into the backfield and allowed Jaron Reed to make the tackle. Later in the same game, the Falcons bring out 22 personnel where they have two running backs and two tight ends on the field. Michael Bennett is Seattle 7 tech and he lines up on the inside shoulder of the playside tight end. The Falcons run outside zone to the right, aiming for the butt of number 80. Bennett uses excellent hand fighting technique to push the right tackle into the running back's path. This forces Freeman out of his groove and right into Cam Chancellor for the stop. Jumping back to their week six match, Bennett lines up in a wide nine alignment off the right tackle. He completely blows up another outside zone running play before it even started. For those wondering, it's very hard to run outside zone against a wide nine defender. In this alignment, Bennett has room to read the play and get a running start in order to set the edge. Also, there were six men in the box with only five assigned blockers. This is not a good sign for the offense. Looking at the all 22 angle, this was actually a run pass option. Julio Jones runs a slant route from the slot. However, since Cliff Averill was in the throwing lane, this is what forced the quarterback to hand the ball to the running back. Combining all these factors, I really think Ryan should have audibled. This was a poor setup from the start, and it clearly backfired as Bennett ripped underneath Ryan Schrader for the stop. Here is one final example where Bennett is the weak side defensive end. The Falcons run two back outside zone using number 42 to lead block. Bennett bursts off the line of scrimmage and effortlessly tosses the right tackle backwards. This forced Freeman to completely cut back across the field, and if Cam Chancellor would have recognized the cutback earlier, this play could have been stopped before Freeman gained the first down. In my last video, I mentioned that Bennett's effort is definitely what makes him so valuable. Not only does he hold the edge well, but he sprints and chases down running backs from behind. Before you call me biased as I've only said positive things so far, I can honestly tell you that I spent over an hour looking for bad plays or really anything that I thought I did poorly. I jumped from the Packers blowout to both Cardinals games with David Johnson, and I can tell you that he graded up very positive for me all season and there was barely anything I can point out as an obvious weakness. Now, there were times when he'd rush too hard up the field, not reading on the run, but even then, those times were very rare. In this play versus the Cardinals, I showed a missed tackle and how it turned into a monster gain for David Johnson. I didn't show this to illustrate that he had a bunch of them. I did the opposite actually, since he only had three missed tackles on over 200 running attempts. Overall, his pass rush is above average, but due to his elite run-stopping ability, he provides so much value to this team. From a contract standpoint, Bennett re-signed to a three-year, $30 million deal at the very end of the 2016 season. Some people have questioned if he's worth the money. Well, based on the tone of my previous video and this one, I think we can all agree he's worth every penny. Well, that's it for Michael Bennett. My next video will be on Dak Prescott, looking at plays from his incredible rookie season. Due to the demands of quarterback scouting, that video will air in two weeks, which will give me plenty of time to study him. If you have any suggestions, or if you want me to break down a topic of your choosing, go ahead and follow the link to my Patreon account. You can also follow me on Twitter at SamuelRGold.